Chapter 1. Meeting the Wolfman This is Jack Skellington. He is a skeleton, and the Pumpkin King of Halloween Town. He is getting ready for this year's Halloween. Looking over, he sees his little brother Ryan dressed as Freddy Krueger, which makes him smile. Hey bro, you're not gonna get us in trouble, are you? Ryan asks. I mean, we have to be respectful. Jack chuckles at Ryan's naivety, then pats his head and chuckles some more. Ryan! I'm sorry about yesterday. It was an accident, really. Now let's go trick-or-treating, Jack says, waving goodbye to Ryan as they both w walk out the same door at the same time. Suddenly, Jack hears a voice behind him. It's the Wolfman, who is still mad that Jack pranked him so good yesterday. Jack is scared out of his mind, but all he does is turn around. I don't think you understand the seriousness of this situation, the Wolfman says. I'm not going to let you off so easy this time. Jack responds, My head is a bit fuzzy. Can you remind me what I did? A wise man once said, Don't talk to strangers, the wolfman responds. The answer to your question is trickery, backstabbing, and lying. Jack looks at him, confused. He continues, These are all very bad things. I'm a protector of the innocent. You've been tricking people and hurting them. I'm gonna have to make sure you never hurt anyone ever again. I'm gonna take you away from all the people that love and care about you, and take you back to my home where I can keep you locked up in an underground cavern. It was just a prank, bro. Calm down, Jack says in an attempt to calm him down. It doesn't work, though. You think just because you're a half-wit that you can't hurt anyone? You get yourself killed by those hunters or worse, and then I will be next in line to punish you, the wolfman says. How can I get killed if I'm already dead? Jack asks. I'll find a way, the wolfman responds. Now you're gonna follow me out of this village and out of this area. I'm taking you back to my cave. But... No buts, he says, raising his voice. You're coming with me. Well, fine, Jack says. The two of them walk out of the village and head back to the cave. Once they get to the cave, the wolfman lunges at Jack's and tries to bite his face off. Ha! Huh. Joke's on you, Jack retorts. I don't have a face. Jack manages to doss his bite and runs out of the cave, never stopping to look back. Chapter 2. Meeting the Old Woman Jack continues to run through the hills until he sees a cottage. He knocks on the door and a woman opens it. Are you the one who needs help? She asks. Yeah, are you the one who can help? I can try. Thank goodness. Look, here's the situation. There's a man chasing me through the hills. He's a wolf man and he's trying to eat me. Please, you have to help me. Hmm, a human trying to get my help from me. Interesting. Come inside and tell me all about it. Well, I, I was a human, but then I died and became a skeleton. The woman smiles. Oh dear, I see you've had a tragic end to the tale, but tell me, why is this man trying to eat you? Cause I pranked him good, bro. The woman studies Jack for a moment, before smiling once again. Well then, it's a good thing you're in luck. I do happen to know the man you're talking about. In fact, he comes to my cottage once every two weeks on a Tuesday. If you come with me, I can take you to him. No, I'm trying to get away from him. All right then, hold on. I'll get my cape, she says, leaving the house and going into a small shed in the back. Jack sits down on the couch and waits for her to get back. He feels like someone is watching him, but he doesn't say anything. Sorry for the wait. I have to get my costume on before I can take you to the man you need to see, the woman says. Which one? Jack asks. The wolfman or someone I don't know? The wolfman, the woman replies. I'm supposed to be in service with him tonight. What kind of service? Church, I'm guessing? No, the freaks in this town are on break for Halloween, so we do a meet and greet, give people free tickets to the show, that sort of thing. I was serving the wolfman tonight, though, but since you're here now, I can correct my mistakes. What's the show? It's a musical about a boy who believes in monsters because of the movies and television. The boy meets a monster and falls in love with her. So, what do you mean by serving the wolfman? The wolfman is a manticore. Of course, he's hard to take, but not impossible. 
Are you fucking the Wolfman? <laughs> that question I could have the answer to. No. The woman looks over Jack's shoulder at something. But what about over there? It looks an awful like... Jack looks over and sees a werewolf watching the front door. The werewolf's eyes glint in the lamplight, escaping from the cottage. Chapter 3. Jack's Iconic Knife, TM. Jack stands up, brandishing his iconic knife, TM. It's the Wolfman's bodyguard! Jack hisses at the woman. The woman frowns and looks back at him. Well, of course he is. Stay back, werewolf, Jack says. I have a knife, TM. The woman sighs and shakes her head. Are you going to let him stay here with you? She asks. I haven't decided yet, Jack answers. It doesn't matter, because I'm not staying, she says. You're not scared he'll attack you in the middle of the night? Like, aren't you too fucking? The woman rolls her eyes. Of course he'll attack me in the middle of the night. Well, what are the odds that I'm way walking outside right now? Much greater. The woman walks past Jack, towards the door. She's almost to the werewolf. She grabs a hold of the door and rips it off the wall. Jack grabs her by the arm. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Come on, I'm not staying here with a beast like that outside, she says. You just let the werewolf in! She turns to Jack. Why? So he can kill me while you do nothing? She shakes off Jack's hand and stomps past him. He looks back at her in silence for a moment, before sighing and following her outside. The werewolf tears the old lady's arm off as she runs by him. He snarls and chases her down, throwing her to the ground before feasting on her flesh. Jack looks at the woman walking off into the woods. Hey! She looks back at Jack. What? Oh my god, are you okay? The woman stops and brushes the grass off her clothing. No, but I'll be getting there soon, she says. I'll run after you. She shakes her head. You won't get far, but it's okay. I'll be fine. I can't let you go out there by yourself. She sighs and looks up at the sky. Why not? You think you can save me? She laughs. What? God, no. I'd crush you in an instant. <laughs> That's why it's okay if you don't go looking for me. But she turns away from Jack and runs into the forest at speeds Jack has never seen an old lady run at before. Chapter 4. TM. A. TM. Tearful. TM. Farewell. TM. Jack waits about a half hour before following her tracks into the woods. He walks along the trail, looking for the woman. As he gets further, he finds that the trees have gotten thicker and the underbrush has grown. Jack finds the cycle of tree doors that go to the other holiday towns and enters a large one with wooden floors and walls. She's here, he thinks, looking at the door. Jack begins to walk down the path, eventually finding his way out of the woods and back to the village he was just in. The wolfman is there, and he's fucking pissed. You traitorous scum, you'll pay for this, he growls. I'm sorry, Jack says, backing away. Sorry won't save your life, he roars, charging towards him. Jack runs the fuck away. Jack turns and sprints back towards the woods, the werewolf in pursuit. Jack gets his knife, TM, out, and stabs him repeatedly in the back as he howls in rage, only now realizing that he's just stabbed his best friend over and over again. He looks up at Jack with a tear in his eye, howling at the sky and collapsing to the ground. Jack keeps running. The werewolf reaches its claws around Jack's neck and tears them out of his throat, breaking through his spine. He collapses, dirt now covering his face. Jack rolls his head over so he can see. His hands are grabbing onto the werewolf's neck. Jack pushes him into the ground, revealing his throat for the finishing blow. Jack puts his hand over the werewolf's snarling mouth and quickly severs his spine with his knife, TM. The werewolf quickly dies before his eyes. Jack picks up his head and puts it back on his spine. Jack ends the reality of his best friend forever, laying his brain helmet back on his head and securing it in place. Jack remembers he was going to go trick-or-treating with his little brother, Ryan. Jack goes out to trick-or-treat with his little brother. The two brothers wander around the neighborhood and collect candy from random people's homes. Jack asks Ryan if he did anything fun while he was gone for a bit. Yeah, I wandered around a bit with those two drunk idiots you gave me money to buy beer for. I could hit him. I could make his face look like one of those celebrity punching bags. Or, I could let him off lightly and give him a black eye. Don't Ah, then it was worth it, Jack says with a smile. Trust me, I will never complain about going out drinking with you ever again. 
Ryan says. Jack helps him gather up the candy they stole, and they make their way back home. Jack's just glad it stopped raining. The end.